All right, Arvin, while you're looking off into the uh, distance and pondering over there, I hope it's about compliance issues because that's what I want to know about for this video is compliance yeah. issues on Amazon. I've recently, I've talked to a couple of sellers who mainly in the toy category, <laughs> they're having some compliance issues. Uh, can you just kind of tell us like what is a compliance issue on Amazon and kind of some of the steps for addressing those um, or maybe like how to prevent them? Well, actually, usually you will get a notification from Amazon uh, telling you that you have to provide these documents in, in, let's say, in the next 30 days. If not, then we will deactivate your listing. Uh, I'm specifically talking about um, uh, products in toys category, especially those for, for below 12 years old. So I'm actually working with uh, one client right now that um, they have this issue that Amazon is asking them to have the children product safety certificate and then also the test result proving that you know that their product is not uh, or will not cause any harm to children so um the if cpsc you go to your sellers, right is that what that is C a cpsc cpcs children EPC product uh, i don't know cp cpsc yeah children product okay. safety certificate um yeah to like you know just just to upload all of these documents. So once you receive the notification, it is important to know that Amazon have like a specific guidelines. And I mean, you can find it in their health page. And how should you make your um your children product safety certificate? Because they will be reviewing the document. And actually, just to share with you what happened to this um seller is that they 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 have the document. It's just that it is not specific enough. To um to tell to the seller support that this document is actually for this product, because as as we always know, like whenever you're dealing with seller support, you have to check as if you're actually yeah. talking to a nine nine year old, right? So right. if you can yeah. spoon feed them with all of those information, so actually I reviewed the certificate. They have the product title there. They have the item model in there, and all other things that they actually asking a document should be. But one thing that they missed is the ASIN number because that uh, ch children children product safety document was actually created prior to the creation of the listing. Therefore, they don't have the ASIN number yet. So when they submitted gotcha. that list that that document to uh, Amazon, they keep on declining it, not knowing what's what's going on because they believe that they have everything correct. So I did um made this recommendation to the client. Actually, you have to make an annotation in here at least to edit that that ASIN because to, you don't want to redo everything and just you know to uh, just to add the ASIN in there. So I told yeah. him, okay, I, even though I know that what what to do in here to add an annotation on the list on the list on the document, let me try to contact seller support first to just to confirm a few things. So yeah, I contacted the seller support and they were able to uh, like confirm. Uh, what I said that yeah, it is missing an ASIN number. So yeah, we've edited it and then yeah, submitted it to Amazon and after a few days got accepted. Nice. So uh, and, yeah, just have to really look at the the help page of Amazon that they will give you a complete list. And just again, even though we don't really want to rely on the help page of Amazon because I mean there's a lot of loopholes loopholes in every processes, then uh, just just check, check uh, like. Make sure you should you still be aware. And... Is it, now is yeah, that is that like solid. just speaking for toys? I'll just use that as the example. But like, do you normally do? You, and hopefully, you know the answer to this. But like, do you normally get that initial certification generally from like the manufacturer, or is that something that you have to normally get a third? Like, you have to get a third party testing done to get that certification. And I know there's we have a, a you know there's a couple people like we know of that do offer that as a service. Um, that I can mm -hmm. think of, but it's a world I'm not super familiar with. I've never sold toys on Amazon. I've just heard about the problems. Well, yeah, I mean, when I'm dealing with the uh, with this kind of issue, usually the the sellers are actually just asking their manufacturer to provide this one. But if I will right. look at the document, it it is a a third party who did the testing, especially the test. You know, because the, the you have to submit two documents: a children product safety certificate, and then the test and like you know that there's no harm in in, in using this toy product mm -hmm. so it's, it's a third party yeah. got it okay cool um any any other categories that have that really commonly or is it i know toys is the one i know about are there other, other ones that you know of that often require some kind of certification testing you know i don't know 
compliance related thing. Well, yeah. The thing is, that I'm I'm not that up to date right now. Like, what are all the categories that require this document? And usually, whenever uh, there's a client having this kind of problem, uh, they're always dealing with um, so product in under voice category. But it yeah. it should be everything should be in the Amazon help page because yeah, just jumping on this call uh for me is uh yeah the only thing I have in my mind right now is just uh, under the toys category but there's a lot in there. Well, I guess the other one, but I think this is more of the like SDS kind of side of the equation. Well, it definitely is. Is you know like I've plenty of pre- plenty of products who have like you know maybe a small amount of alcohol in them. You know, especially like what during like the the post. COVID thing, like all the hand sanitizer products, alcohol, if not alcohol, are they flammable? Cool. Batteries, I don't know, batteries are mm-hmm. another big one, but do, I think those fall under not compliance. Those are under the SDS Compliant. side. Hazmat. Hazmat. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm getting so at. Okay, cool. It, it, it has its own dashboard where you have to um, provide all of these, um, let's say, for example, the safety data sheet document or an exemption um, right. that you have, because Amazon will review it separately i think I, i'm not sure actually if it's the same team if, if the, it is the same team who will be reviewing the hazmat documentation or the compliance document mm. so um yeah. yeah it's it's two different um teams and it's two different have, dashboards because yeah. you have we were just talking about it right before this like i'm more familiar with the the sds like document upload dashboard but i think there's mm-hmm. that separate one the compliance dashboard for toys right is that right there's two separate areas at least right now yeah yeah, it, it, they are on a separate different uh, sep- separate dashboard. So uh, the compliance dashboard, you can see it in the um, account health, like below the, um, I think it's below the the shipping performance. Like if you scroll below it, there's compliance dashboard, then they just click it there. And then for the hazmat, usually I just research, research it like hazmat on the uh, search box. Yeah, and you have to search for you it. You just have to click the right. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Yeah, you will be di- redirected to that page. So, yeah. Got it. Cool. Good stuff. All right. Well, that's it for this one, I think. Um, if you have any questions, let Arvin or I know. Cheers. <laughs>